this is the Herald Maverick 125 and in this video we're going to give you a full review of this bike. Now the first thing you notice with the Herald Maverick 125 is how beautiful it is. I would say it's got to be the, the most beautiful 125cc motorcycle on the planet. Um, and what an incredible looking bike compared to the sort of um, big four manufacturers who at the moment are producing some quite ugly bikes to be honest, um, which aren't cool. But to get the cool factor back into riding motorcycles, this has got to be the very best starting point there is. So this bike costs £2,499 um, in the UK plus on the road charges and it comes in seven different colours. Um, this is of course matte black, um, you've also got gloss black, silver, yellow, um, grey, blue and green. So um, you've got plenty of different colour options to choose from. Now this bike only weighs 121 kilos, which is ever so light, which means you, know, you can pick it up and move it around ever so easily. Um, and when you're riding it, especially off-road, that makes it a lot of fun. And we had a little play with it on the grass and it was a hoot to ride and you can just flip it around and face the other way and go over bumps and stuff. It's ever so easy to ride uh, and great fun. So it's not only a commuter bike that you can go from A to B on and go to work, go and see your friends, but you can go off road and have some fun. And these tires, I must say, are really, really good because they grip ever so well. And the worst, probably the most slippery surface you can ride on is wet grass. And we were going up and down on the wet grass, no problem at all. So brilliant tires. Now, being a 125 um, and it's four stroke and whatever, um, they're not overly powered um, and obviously they have to comply with the regulations which is under 14 horsepower. This one's got 9.8 bait horsepower and that's not enough power to get yourself in any trouble. So if you've got a parent who's worried about you getting a bike and they say, no, you're not getting one, it's too dangerous. Um, it's not, it's no more dangerous than a bicycle. In fact, it's safer than a bicycle because you've got a proper EC approved helmet on and you've got all the protective gear and you can, you've got enough power to get out of trouble. Whereas on a bicycle, you can't get out of the way. All you can do is brake. Um, so it's much safer in that aspect um, to be on the road on a 125. Now it's a very nice bike to ride, ever so easy to ride. If you are starting out, this is your first bike, I'd say it's absolutely perfect. If you're a parent of someone who's starting out, I wouldn't worry about it at all. It's not overly powerful um, and it's better than surely getting on a bus and hanging around a bus stop and waiting for the bus. And if you miss the bus, you've got to wait half an hour and you're standing next to people with COVID coughing on you and all that rubbish or going on the train. Surely this is much, much, much nicer than uh, doing that. And the advantage is if you buy this motorcycle, um, ride it around for a year or two and then sell it, you've still got the value in the bike. You're not going to lose a lot of money on a bike like this. Um, so if you compare the costs of public transport to getting one of these, this is far cheaper and so much cooler. So comparing this to a 50cc, um, if you've come from a 50cc and you're going up to a 125, or if you want to know whether there's a big difference, um, I had a 50cc as my first bike. I had it de-restricted um, so that it's not restricted to 28 miles an hour, which is ridiculous. Um, and being a two-stroke, um, there's a power band that you notice. So the power is not linear, whereas with this bike, um, the acceleration is smooth the whole way through the rev range, whereas with a two-stroke, 
you notice it's not got any power and then it goes like that. So um, you notice a sudden acceleration near the end of the, each gear, whereas this is much more smooth. So in terms of acceleration, um, I don't think there's a huge difference in speed um, acceleration wise between a 50cc de-restricted two stroke and a 125 four stroke, um, but this will beat it in the top speed aspect. This will go quite a bit further, um, probably get 60 miles an hour out of it, whereas the 50 will be uh, running out of gas at 45. So um, that's your difference there. The handling on this is very good. The steering is very quick, so it will change direction ever so quickly indeed. Um, on a more powerful bike, that could become a bit of an issue, but on a lightweight bike like this with only a 125cc, it's very manoeuvrable and lots of fun, so it's not a problem at all. Um, the brakes are good, and you've got, I mean, you've got massive disc brakes front and rear, so um, no problems in stopping. Um, the suspension is very good, it's a firm ride, but once you hit the bumps, you need that firmness to soak up all the bumps. Um, this bike will do anything, you can go anywhere on this bike, you can go into the centre of London, in the centre of the cities, and you can get out into the countryside and have some fun, and it handles it all beautifully. got a seat height of 885 millimeters on this bike um, I am just about six foot two ish um, and this bike feels a nice position to ride um, it's not overly big it's not got a big wheelbase so I don't know how it looks from an outsider's perspective but as a person who's riding it it doesn't feel too small at all. So you'd be all right if you're over six foot. And of course, if you're under six foot, you'll be fine on it as well. I'd say if you are under five foot 10, um, you probably, because as the seat height is quite high, you probably notice that you might be on your tiptoes um, at the traffic lights or whatever, but um, you can obviously lean it to one side and be on one foot. It's not really a big problem. Now, this bike literally came to us brand new with no miles on the clock. So when you get a new bike, um, you should always ride it carefully for the first uh, couple of hundred miles. So it's called running it in. So you ride it gently, you don't over rev it. And we've been careful with it. So we haven't got the full out of it. Um, initially, the engine feels tight. So you just go along the first 30 miles um, gingerly, a bit carefully. But once it sort of beds itself in, uh, you can feel the power increasing a little bit. Um, the horsepower that it produces is under the legal limit, which is 14 horsepower. So this is 9.8 or 9, we'll double check in a minute. Um, but the, that gives you room to perhaps change the exhaust or the, the back part of the exhaust to slip on and get a little bit more power out of it with, without going over the actual limit. So there's a little bit of a scope for um, movement on that. So on the Maverick, you've got a 12 litre fuel tank um, and you don't have a a fuel gauge you've got a fuel warning light so when that comes on basically fill up um, and we don't have any miles per gallon figures for this bike but 125s are normally between 90 and 100 miles per gallon so um, it's good for the environment and it's not going to cost you a fortune in petrol to run so it's much better than a bus. <laughs> The side stand on this bike is very good. Um, a lot of big bikes are rubbish side stands basically, um, but this is easy to go and you know when it's in place and it's there's no thing, oh is it on the stand, is it going to fall over? It's just there and you know that it's in place. You've got upside down forks on this bike, um, the front suspension is adjustable as well um, and you've got a monoshock on the rear. Um, and You've got this nice mud, rubber mud guard just, on where, just where the back wheel is. Um, so that's gonna stop that monoshock getting covered in mud and the engine of course as well. You've got no rear mud guard or fender or whatever you want to call it. Um, so that 
gives it a nice styling, as you can see, with the seat being the rearest point of the bike. Um, but it's not giving you much mud protection. Luckily in the UK, we've got this huge, ridiculous number plates, um, and that does most of the, um, what the mud guard would do anyway. But if it is really wet or muddy, you are probably going to get a bit on your bum. You've got a proper aluminium skid plate on the front here. Um, not only is that going to protect the bike off-road um, if you're going over rocks or something hard, it's going to protect the engine and the frame from getting scratched, um, but it's also going to do a little bit of mud protection as well, so it stop the lower end of the engine getting covered in mud. Um, a lot of expensive big um, CC bikes have a horrible plastic one, so it's nice that even on a 125 you've got a proper skid plate on there. Now one thing I am very keen on is minimalistic retro looking bikes and this is um, one of those because all you've got is this tiny little uh, dial here so it tells you your speed and how many miles you've done. Uh, it's got some warning lights but not a lot else and that's fine, you don't need all this stuff. It looks like a motocross bike when you're sitting on it. Um, you've got the on off switch, uh, I'm not sure what the switch there does, it doesn't seem to do anything. And you've got the starter switch, on the other side you've got your headlights and your flasher. Uh, your indicators and your horn. Very simple, no modes, nothing to mess about with and worry about. You just start it and go. Now, as this bike comes with nice knobbly tyres as standard, um, obviously that gives you good off-road ability um, and it gives you lots of grip. But on the road, you might notice at um, higher speeds that you're getting a little bit of vibration. Um, there's nothing wrong with a bike. That is just what knobbly tyres do. The, you know, the little gaps in between each, um, each um, pattern on the tyre, um, when it's going in between, you get a little bit of a vibration, but there's nothing wrong with that. Now you've got a nice, simple, uh, cable operated clutch on this. Um, simplicity is what this bike's all about, which makes maintenance much easier. So being your first bike, um, it's easy to tinker with if you need to and adjust a few things. Uh, but the other thing I was thinking, not only is this suitable for a 17 or 18 year old in the UK and in the EU, most countries it's the same, some it's a little bit younger. But if you wanted a second bike, um, so personally I own a Harley Davidson, this would be a really nice second bike just to have on a muddy, wet day. I think I don't want to get my nice, shiny, expensive bike out. Uh, you can jump on this, go down the shops or go for a little ride, go in the countryside and have some fun. Um, and it's not so expensive that you're going to have to worry about it so much. And it's so light that if you're going off road or somewhere and it's really muddy, um, it's easy to ride and get through things. So it's a perfect second bike. foot pegs on this bike move up like that so the reason for that is if you did have a crash they're not going to snap or bend they're going to move and take the impact as they've got a little bit of a spring load as well and also just notice the brake lever has also got this feature which I thought was really good um, so that's not going to snap off and also adding to that point um, the same thing is with the gear shifter as well so this front mud guard or fender whatever you want to call it um, it's quite small, it's mainly for styling rather than um, effect. Obviously it does keep a bit of mud off, but if it was bigger it would keep most of the mud from getting up here. But um, having it small like that keeps the um, weight down and it obviously looks better style-wise. Um, it's only kept on by this little rung. So at, on tickover you might notice it vibrating a little bit. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, it's just the way it's held on. It's quite lightweight, that's why. So, one of the first things you notice um, looking at this bike is the exhaust. Now, to the normal person, you think, how the, where the hell is the exhaust gas coming out of? Because um, it's got a plate on the back and there's no, normally you see a hole on the end of the exhaust. Um, but what it is, is you've got multiple gaskets and gaps in between, so the gas can get out through those gaps in the gaskets. And this doesn't affect the performance um, in any bad way. It's, if anything, it's good for the performance. Um, you'll notice it on some bigger bikes, um, like 
use an exhaust like that for performance. So um, it's a nice exhaust and it does give you a nice sound as well. So adding to the retro styling of this bike, you've got nice wide handlebars, um, you've got this pad in the middle here, and you've also got this um, side plate here, um, which looks just like some of the old scramble bikes um, where they'd have their racing number on the side there. So if you wanted to, you could get a sticker and put a, a number of your choice on the side there. Now you've got five gears on this, and you get up through the gears quite quickly. Um, it's a 125 and it's not a fast bike and no 125 is a fast bike and no 125 is powerful uh, unless it's a racing one. Um, of course on the road you have laws that you have to uh, adhere to so it's the same as any other bike in that respect uh, but the gears go through nice and easily so everything on this bike works as it should and it's very impressive. Um, this engine is air cooled so that means it's low maintenance, um, you haven't got to put any coolant in the engine or anything um, and all you really need to do is fill it up with petrol and make sure the oil's um, filled up so it's very low maintenance. I'm six foot three uh, and about 17 stone or something and um, this bike's absolutely fine there's plenty of height so it's a nice high bike very high actually the wheelbase is quite short which gives it its nimbleness um, but it's not a problem for someone my size and because the seat is flat it's a bench seat you can get right the way back if you need to and you can get all the way forward for the corners off-road uh, so you've got a lot of movement on the bike so on and off-road um, you've got the perfect riding position on the sides, either side of the fuel tank, you've got these rubber um, rubber guards here. Now, that also adds to the retro styling, but it also gives you grip on the tank so you can hug it with your knees, um, and it also stops um, you rubbing the paint. So if you've got matte paint, um, if you rub your knees on it all the time, it starts to gloss up and it doesn't look as good as it when it did when it came out of the factory. So that's gonna stop that from happening. So all you have to do to ride this bike, um, you need to be 17 years old in the UK, it's different depending if you're in a European country, they're all slightly different. Um, you just have to do your compulsory basic training, which is a one day course um, it's around a car park through cones and stuff and then you go on the road for a bit. Um, you can do that on um, your bike if you want to buy it first or you can hire a bike, it's not much extra to do that. Um, and that's easy as it is. If you want to take your L plates off, you can do your full test on this bike, but that won't allow you to ride anything more than a 125. So all you'll be doing is taking your L plates off. So you might as well wait till you're 19. You can do your A2 license, get something up to 47 horsepower. Um, but all you need to do is a CBT, so it's very easily done. So before we carry on with the video, don't forget to check out our Teespring store. We've got hoodies, sweatshirts, t-shirts, many different designs. Um, you can see them in the carousel below. There's more on the website. So our verdict on this bike, um, if you're a young person, you're looking for a 125, um, this has got to be one of the coolest options out there. Um, it's cheap to run, um, it's it means you don't have to get on public transport and wait about and be with loads of people, especially in COVID. Um, it's a perfect way to isolate. Um, and you don't have to have anyone give you a lift, so free your parents up if that's one of their problems. Um, it's not dangerous um, on the road, on a bike like this, you've not got enough power to get in yourself into trouble. Um, and it's the perfect starter bike. Make sure you leave a like on the video, um, subscribe to the channel for more. We've got plenty more bikes coming um, 
end of this year and next year we'll have all the new bikes um, from all manufacturers and all the capacities um, and leave your comments below what do you think of this bike is this the coolest 125 on the market i think it's certainly one of them if not the coolest